Muhsinun. The Muhsinun, those who are like striving to do every prayer on time and way more than that, and constantly in this state of extremely amazing worship. Amanu is people whose faith have entered their hearts, but it hasn't quite settled. Their actions are not fully there. If you are someone who is struggling with sinning or shortcomings, or you feel like in Ramadan you're one way, and the rest of the year you're another way, that doesn't make you hypocritical. It makes you someone who's struggling to be firm and close to Allah, and then you falter, and then you come back. And think about Yusuf alayhi salam. How many trials did Yusuf alayhi salam go through in his life? I mean, think about the reality of his family issues being thrown into a well by your siblings. Think about even after all of the time of being, you know, pursued by a number of women, being jailed, and after all of this being placed in a position of power, to have those same brothers to your face not recognize you. Talk badly about that brother who they he had. Like, how would that make you feel emotionally? Like, ripping open old wounds, you're finally like, now, alhamdulillah, I'm in this space, I'm like, you know, in a place of privilege, and I can use it in the right way. And those same people who put you through all of that, they still think those terrible things about you. Yusuf, alayhi salam, he had difficulty in his life, but obviously he's better than all of us combined. And yet, he says, anta waliyi fi dunya wal akhirah. Yusuf, alayhi salam, uses the word wali the name Al-Wali. So when you and I are going through something, when I go through something like a miscarriage, may Allah protect everyone when I went through something like a miscarriage, may Allah protect you, Allah bless you all. Mm -hmm. When you go through depression, when you're struggling with doubts and faith, when you're going through an addiction, whatever you're going through, remember who you have. Al-Wali is your friend and your guardian. And that includes those of us who struggle with sin over and over and over. Some of us feel so far away because we feel like there's no way we can get over something that we keep doing. But think about the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, Abdullah. He used to constantly drink. He used to drink alcohol. He was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ. He would be punished for his public drinking over and over to the point that the companions got frustrated. And they were like, what's up with this guy? He's constantly sinning in the same exact way. And they, they, they cursed him. They, 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 they were saying things about him that were just wrong. And the Prophet وسلم, himself stood up uh, for this man. And he declared that this man loves Allah and the Prophet If the Prophet himself وسلم, could declare how much this man loves Allah and his Prophet, and he's a companion of the Prophet who sees the Prophet on a regular basis, who has the opportunity to become the best of Muslims that have ever existed because he's literally physically sitting with a prophet, then why not me and you that are struggling in America, that are dealing with Islamophobia, that are dealing with all types of different racism or sexism or anything else that you're struggling with. And on top of that, you're struggling to be Muslim in Ramadan with crazy long fasting hours. Maybe you have a crazy schedule and you're still fasting through it. What about me and you? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is insha'Allah hopefully looking at us even when we make mistakes and saying, that's a servant that loves me. We pray that we be of those people. He's not looking for perfection. He loves you anyway. And when we look at those who turn to him, you know sometimes in your heart, have you ever wanted to, you know, you, you, you wanted to do something and you knew it was wrong. And it didn't make you happy that it was wrong, but the action itself made you happy. Like, let's say you knew a relationship was wrong, but it made you happy to be in it. Or like, you knew not praying Luhur or Maghrib, or I, let's say Maghrib. Maghrib, missing Maghrib was wrong, but you wanted to watch that movie in the theaters and you were gonna walk out. Okay, so you, that action in and of itself is wrong, but it made you happy to watch the movie, you got me? But the Prophet وسلم, he talks about a believer being the person who, they're, they're, the things that they do that are good, it makes them happy. And the things that they do that are wrong, it makes them sad. So even if you didn't do the right thing, the fact that it didn't make you happy that you were doing the wrong thing, that in and of itself is a description of a believer. In and of itself, that's a description of who you are. And Allah says, 
That then he turned to them in repentance so that they would turn to him. If uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Imam al qurtubi talks about, he, he turns to you in repentance before you turn to him. If you've ever had in your heart for a moment this feeling that you want to come back to Allah, that's not coming from you. That's literally coming from Allah. He wants you to come back to him. So he puts this feeling inside of your heart to come back to him. And if you haven't felt that feeling, it doesn't mean there's no hope for you at all. In, in, we all pray that Allah puts that feeling in our hearts and that we turn to him once we feel that feeling. So even if you haven't felt it, there's so much hope for you still, as in so many ahadith talk about, if you just turn to him, that he accepts you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes, maybe it's just that you're struggling with who you are today versus who you used to be. Like today, you may not be able to do the type of worship you used to do, and it makes you feel guilty. You maybe feel overwhelmed. And this is something one of my teachers taught me, which has, subhanAllah, has like saved me this Ramadan, may Allah bless him. Ibn Atwa'illah says something incredible. That you looking outside of the asbab that Allah has placed in front of you for ways to come close to him is a hidden type of hawa. Let me explain that, what that means. Sometimes the way to Allah after praying your obligatory prayers, like the basic obligation, the way to him after that is taking care of your parents. Or the way to, that, to him after that is working so you can provide for your family. Or waking up at 6 a.m. because your toddler does, even in Ramadan. Mashallah, this is my son, please pray for us. Alhamdulillah, blessing every morning. Alhamdulillah. I am so tired. That's beside the point. The point is, when you're too tired to pray even two rakahs after Aisha because you're collapsing, because you have to take care of a child the next morning. That is what Allah has placed for you. And Ibn Qayyim Rahimullah talks about fardiyatul waqt. That these are the obligations of the time that Allah has placed in front of you. So when you have a crazy big exam, or when you have to work, you have to take care of your health, your mental health, whatever it is. And it's stopping you from doing those things that all those other believers are doing. All the people who are praying here for hours at a time, who love fasting, can't wait for Ramadan. All those excited Ramadan faster worshiper believers, and you don't feel like you're one of them. You know what you're doing instead? You're taking the asbab, the means that Allah has placed in front of you to draw closer to Him. And if you were to try to remove those just because you wanted to feel a spiritual high, since you didn't have those responsibilities, that's not closeness to Allah. That's you trying to find a way out of the responsibilities he's given you, and the guilt that's induced from that is not something pious. Instead, find ways to come close to Allah in the worship he's put in front of you, even if it doesn't taste sweet. That spiritual sweetness doesn't always come from changing an explosion diaper. It really doesn't. And it also doesn't come from having to work crazy long hours when you're exhausted. But at the same time, that is the worship that Allah is putting in your place to come closest to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, we know that the Prophet ﷺ told us, that indeed actions are by intention. So whenever you make the intention, whatever you're doing, that inshallah in and of itself is worship. There was a man who, the, um, the, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, this was, um, excuse me, in, in Tabarani. He was uh, strong and he looked, I guess, strong. And so he was walking and the companions saw him and they were talking to the Prophet ﷺ and they're like, wouldn't it have better been better if this man was out, you know, out in the cause of Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ responded and said, if he went to work to provide for his young children, he was out in the cause of Allah. If he went to work to provide for his old elderly parents, he was out in the cause of Allah. If this man was out to work so that he would be able to sustain himself and not beg people, he was out in the cause of Allah. Oh, kemaqal, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the Prophet sallallahu is teaching us that unlike the very narrow view we have of what closeness to Allah looks like, everything we do, including the emotional struggles that we have, 
those are forms of worship and those are forms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and uses for us to draw closer to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-wali to the one who draws close to him through the obligatory. So he tells us in a hadith qudsi that he's a wali, that he's on your side that when you do the obligations, that's how you come close to him. That's it, that's what's asked of you. He's not asking you to do the obligations and also weep in salah all night. He's not asking you to do the obligations and also smile with extreme vigor at your love for doing worship. Inshallah, we'll be blessed with those feelings one day. But that's not what's a requirement for you. The action in and of itself is what Allah is asking for. And when we are trying to do more, that's awesome. Let's try to do more because we should strive to be better believers. But when what that is holding you back from Allah, your own self, because of how guilty you feel, then recognize that's not from Allah. He wants you however you turn to Him. When I was studying in Egypt, a few sisters and I went to dinner, and we had a bunch of money left over after we pulled our money together from food. So we decided that we were going to go and give this homeless boy who used to sleep in front of a grocery store with his little pet dog, the extra money. And we walked for 20 minutes to get to this place where this little boy, was, he's a teenager, where this teenage boy used to sleep. So we finally get there, and he's nowhere. But this puppy is there. And there's this tiny puppy, and he's trying to open a water bottle with his paws. And he can't get it open. And so we came and we opened the bottle and we poured some water out and this puppy drank so much water. And then once it was done drinking its water, it just, just kind of ran away. And I was thinking, subhanAllah, we are a group of foreigners, we're a group of American students going to a restaurant with some extra money. Our intention was to donate. We walked 20 minutes only to open a bottle cap for this dog to quench its thirst. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of his creation like a small innocent puppy, who doesn't pray and struggle with worshiping him. Obviously, all creations of Allah are, you know, believers. Okay, we got that. But, I mean, like, we're struggling to worship him. So if he's going to facilitate all of this for this tiny puppy, then what is he going to facilitate for the person who is going through the hardships that you're going through and trying to think good of him too? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, I am as my servant thinks I am. So when you think great of Allah, when you have hope in Allah, when you are certain that Allah will accept your repentance and certain that Allah understands your struggle, inshallah, he will do all of that because he is your wali. In any circumstance, in any space you're in, he is there to be your loving guide. It's just about reframing our, our minds and our framework so when we approach him, we know he's on our side and then trying our best to live our lives in a way that even when we falter, it's okay. We just go back to him because that's what a loving friend does. They constantly guard you, they protect you, they're your ally, and they accept you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this night accept every single one of us and everyone we love. Amen.